men do not have relationships, accountability partners, platforms to be honest with another, with one another. One of the most impactful podcasts we've had was with Sean Whalen, And I asked him, mm. what's one thing you quit doing that enabled you to succeed? And he said, lying. And I said, about mm. what? And he said, everything. And like every time I say that, like I get chills, just like just I just got chills saying it because it's so true. Every man walks around, not every man, but the majority of men walk around. Hey, man, how are you? Good. Great. Yeah, I'm awesome, man. Good. Great. How are you? Can't complain. But they're cheating on their wife. Their kids hate them. Their business is failing. They're fat. They're, like they're barely got their head there above water, but they're putting on this front like everything's OK. And, and it's not. And they don't have right. people to talk to. And I think it's a lot of that's generational. Uh, a lot of that is how you were brought up and, and, but it's got to change. Like it's, it's so crucially important. So that's why I'm so thrilled to talk to you and man, I'm just so inspired by what you're doing because that to me is like your whole purpose in life now is to give people that outlet, give people that ability to go out and have the real conversations so that they can figure out what in the world to do with this, this life. Right. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. You're pressing your vibe. What up, guys? It's Gary Vee, and it's time for the Daily Bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket, because I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward, right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry, because it's time for the Daily Bread. All right, what's up guys? So wanted to catch you up on all that's been going on since Friday, a lot has happened. Uh, let's see, Friday started off with a No Hook Media meeting in the morning at seven o'clock. Uh, we went through a ton of different topics, the most important of which is the No Hook Media newsletter that are starting to go out every single Friday. In order to sign up to receive that newsletter, you need to go to my website, which is tylerharrispage.com, put in your info at the top, you'll become one of our VIPs. These newsletters are gonna have the best content from the week from my page, my business partner, Joseph Caldwell, the CEO of Changes Page, and from Sales Wolves. So it's create great content uh, that you're going to want to see. Next, went into our meeting that we do every Friday from 9 to 11, meeting, meeting, meeting. Then we did three of probably the best podcasts I've ever done in my entire life. We had the first one with Ryan Mickler from the Order of Man podcast, uh, just an incredible individual. Uh, we had the second with Patrick Bet David, third with Peter Voog. I mean, these were like 52 minutes, 47 minutes, 42 minutes, back to back to back. And it was some of the best content that I've ever been able to capture, some of the best conversations that I've ever been able to have uh, with people. And so we're gonna be showing that throughout this week. And so that's really why we wanted to do this kind of explanation of what's been going on. Uh, so got all those nailed out on Friday, then Sunday night headed back down to Georgia as I usually always do Sunday night or early Monday morning. So we drove down to Atlanta Sunday night Yesterday, which was Monday, got a ton of meetings on the books, sold 57 life insurance policies yesterday. Last meeting didn't start till 1145 at night, didn't get out of there till about 1220 in the morning, did an uh, Instagram live at 1220 as I was walking out of my uh, last meeting. So far today, I've already sold 22 more policies. So we're at 79 life insurance policies sold so far in two days. I am sitting down now at this desk where I have to go through all of this paperwork. I got about three hours worth of paperwork uh, to fill out um, here in the next few hours to get that stuff submitted. And uh, that's it, guys. Just wanted to catch you up. A whole lot of different things going on. Uh, but man, I'm excited about the content you're going to see on the daily vlog this week. It is impactful and uh, it's some of the best stuff we've ever had. This is the Breadwinner Podcast. Hosted by entrepreneur, influencer, and sales wolf. Tyler Harris. Now, let's get into the show. 
What is up, everybody? This is Tyler Harris, and I'm your host of the Breadwinner Podcast. Glad to have you on today, and we have an incredible uh, guest. You guys probably uh, already know him from his, his podcast that we'll get into here shortly. But man, we've got Ryan Mickler in the house, not literally, but kind of virtually, I guess, and on audio and Skype. And, and man, so Ryan is... I've been inspired by Ryan's uh, content on his uh, podcast, man. He, I'm, t- I'm going to tell you right now, you are one of the best conversationalists. I don't know if that's even really a word, but I'm just going to say conversationalist that I, I've ever heard. Like the interviews are incredible. They flow. They always kind of come full circle and come back to the themes. And man, I've been blown away uh, by all the content that you're putting out. But man, Ryan is a successful entrepreneur, influencer, father of what, four, right? Four kids, Father yeah. I've got four, four of them, and that's a—I mean, that's a full-time job in itself. Every and time I turn around, it seems like there's more of them, man. <laughs> you, well, you know that you know what causes that. I, I, I figured it out now. Four later, I figured it out. <laughs> that's right. And so, man, I want to bring Ryan on, and and he'll give you a little bit more in depth on who he is, where he's from, what he's working on right now, and um, look forward to you guys hearing from Ryan. So, Ryan, man, thank you first and foremost uh, for having me on your podcast. I cannot wait uh, till that gets out because I really think we talked about some important topics in regards to masculinity and what it means to be a man. And um, and like I said, I'm just incredibly impressed uh, with your ability to have these deep but meaningful and in and out just timely conversations with people man so thank you for being on yeah you bet i appreciate that compliment because i I don't i mean i i've had to work on that quite honestly (laughs) so the fact that somebody notices that is a good thing because i'm not the most extroverted person in the world and sometimes you know having conversations can be a challenging thing but i i really have tried to work on that so i really appreciate the compliments that means a lot to me man Dude, and, and i and just to tell you like i've had probably four or five conversations in the last month where i've told other people that like i was talking to colby the other day and we were talking yeah. about you i was like man i was like he's just like the way he asked the questions the way they always kind of tie in with other questions and it's it's a difficult thing what you're doing and what we're doing it is right a challenge here. for like sure it's, it's absolutely difficult to ask a question and to really listen and grasp the feedback but then you've also got the next question on your list but it may not make sense in the context of where they just took it so <laughs> yeah it is man. it is and you you nailed it right there man the hardest part is to listen because i've noticed what a lot of people will do is they'll they'll ask a question and then they'll mentally check out because they've got that next question yep. on a list. I don't even have a list anymore. I've got I've got <laughs> some good. bullet points I want to address and talk about, but I don't want to like pigeonhole myself or my guest into one thing. Absolutely. So anyways, I, I know that's not the subject of today's today's conversation, but like I said, it means a lot, man. I, yeah. I really appreciate those compliments. Well, well, tell everybody a little bit about who you are. Yeah. So like, like you said, I mean, anytime anybody gives me the opportunity to say who I am, I always, I always say I'm a husband and father first, uh, everything I do in my life centers around that. And so a lot of guys will, will define themselves by the things they do for work or their, uh, their hobbies and things like that, which, which are important. Don't get me wrong, but I do those things to support my other purpose in life, which is to be a great husband, be a great father, be a great man in general. And fortunately for me, over the past three or four years, I've been able to find meaningful work that helps me find congruency between who I want to be as a man and then the way I show up in the world for other people. And, and, and you look at a career, that's, that's what you're doing, right? You're serving. You're out there helping other people. You're offering uh, solutions and products to people's problems. And, and for me, three years ago, we created an organization called Order of Man, which is hope, uh, focused on helping other men do the same thing I'm trying to do. And through the podcast and the blog and the movement and the brotherhood and everything that we've got, got going on, there's a lot of congruency in my life. And man, I got to tell you, I'm the most fulfilled I've ever been because I get to show up as the same man regardless of where I am. If I'm at home with my kids, I'm the same as I am behind the mic and I'm the same as I am when I'm out on a date with my wife and the same as I am when I'm shooting guns or, or working out with my with my buddies. And uh, that congruency has, has led to some pretty fulfilling and rewarding experiences over the past three years. Man, that's awesome. Congruency is one of my favorite words in the English language. And man, it, when it when you've got it, you you get it. Like it, it's it so is. You're, I mean, you're just firing on all cylinders. And what I notice in a lot of guys, they talk about these hats they've got to wear, right? Like, yep. oh, I've got to put on my worker hat, or I've got to put on my father hat. It's like there's no hats, dude. There's just your life. So if you can find a way to be the same person wherever you are, not only is it much more efficient, it's a much more rewarding way to live. 
oh, it, 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 less stressful and less taxing. And it's just, I, I did a post about this the other day and it got a lot of comments and I got deep into the, some arguments with some people in those comments when I talked about like, be you, not like there, there's the you at work, the you with your friends, the you at church, the you in front of your mom, the you in front of your kids, the you in front of your wife. The, like there should just be one you. Like mm-hmm. that's that's you. Yeah, and I, under, I understand people's reasonings. Like I, but there's there's no excuse. It's it's you, and it's you can only fake it for so long. It is ex- well, it's hard it's because you want to be liked, right? Like yeah, I know absolutely. I do. You know, I, I want to be liked. I want to be validated or approved and these guys who walk around and say i don't care what anybody else thinks i i quite honestly don't don't totally buy into that because if that were the case i think their behavior would be a whole lot different yep. uh it's a nice gesture but at the end of the day i mean we want to be liked and approved and validated but i i found that the key for me is is caring about what some people think right yep. like it's not caring about what everybody thinks it's caring about what the right people think and the types of people who uh, who you want to attract and be around in your life, man. And it's not. So I don't much. know how you do that all day. By the way, like you've got people videoing you <laughs> in the cameras. I'm like, man, I'd be so distracted. I was I was telling my wife last night. <laughs> I got home. I, I'm on the road four nights a week, and I got home late last night. And my wife was laying in bed, and we were talking, and uh, she said something about just that <laughs> about me having someone follow me around with a camera. And, and I said, uh, you know, it's really not that awkward. You know, you're just at a restaurant ordering food and all of a sudden someone comes right up here like this. And right puts up in a your phone grill. Like right in your face and their face with no like context of they have no idea. Like they don't even know this person's with me. They come from the <laughs> other side of the room right up into the face. And you just kind of have to play it off. And I just kind of joke. It. I joke about it now. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I can't shake this guy. He's been stalking me for three months. That's, and- <laughs> that's, my- <laughs> that's funny. But man, like. I'm so excited about this conversation because I am growing more and more aware isn't even the word, but like I'm getting more and more of this feeling of responsibility. The very feeling that you had with conversations I've having, I'm having or have had with men, men do not have relationships, accountability partners, platforms to be honest with another, with one another. One of the most impactful podcasts we've had was with Sean Whalen. And I asked him, what's one thing you quit doing that enabled you to succeed? And he said, lying. And I said, about mm. what? And he said, everything. And like, every time I say that, like I get chills, just like, just, I just got chills saying it because it's so true. Every man walks around, not every man, but the majority of men walk around. Hey man, how are you? Good. Great. Yeah. I'm awesome, man. Good. Great. How are you? Can't complain, but they're, cheating on their wife, their kids hate them, their business is failing, they're fat, like they're barely got their head there above water, but they're putting on this front like everything's okay and and it's not and they don't have right. people to talk to and I think it's a lot of that's generational, uh, a lot of that is how you were <laughs> brought up and and but it's got to change, like it's, it's so crucially important, so that's why I'm so thrilled to talk to you and man, I'm just so inspired by what you're doing because that to me is like your whole purpose in life now is to give people that outlet, give people that ability to go out and have the real conversations so that they can figure out what in the world to do with this, this life. Right. Yeah, no. And it's a good point. I mean, you talk about this, this venue and this outlet to have these conversations. I think I see a lot and maybe it's because I'm in the the business, the quote unquote business of, of helping these guys out. But what I see a lot is I see that that people are just having these kind of these these vulnerability type conversations for the sake of being vulnerable. And, and I think that's a mistake, too. Sure. Like there's one end of the spectrum that says, for example, you know, don't share anything. Men are stoic. We, we, we always have the front. We do the things that we're supposed to do. And there's that extreme side of things. And then there's this other extreme side that says, be vulnerable and open yourself up and share your feelings. And, you know, if it doesn't if it doesn't drive results, what's the point? Yep. So either end of those spectrums doesn't drive results. If you're just sitting there bitching and moaning and complaining and whining and being quote unquote vulnerable, but it's not moving the needle in the direction you want to go, that's not productive either, especially for men. I mean, we're, we're bottom line driven and we should be, you, you used a perfect word responsibility. I did a podcast just today and so many people focus on rights. Like it, you know, it's my right to health insurance. It's my right to a good job. It's my right that my wife supports me. It's my right that my employer promotes me. 
And, and that's a weak, pathetic way of thinking, quite honestly. It's yeah. like the bare minimum. Like, what <laughs> what am I entitled to? Yeah. Versus the 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 extreme, not the extreme, but the elevated idea is responsibility. Yep. Like, what are my responsibilities as a man? What's my responsibility to my employer? What's my responsibility to my wife and kids? What's my responsibility as a man showing up in the community? When you start living life to the elevated idea of responsibility versus the minimal idea of, of rights, man, it's it's so so powerful when you start looking at it like that, and it's results driven. So. Yeah, we don't need to always be stoic, but frankly, sometimes we need to be because yep. we got to put our head down and there's work to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's not always vulnerable because, yeah, sometimes crying about it or being upset about it isn't, again, moving the needle. So it's finding that medium that actually produces results. You're exactly right, man. And when you talk about responsibility, that's that's one of the biggest things I focus on is personal responsibility, the lack of it is a cancer in society, a ca 100%. absolute cancer. and the old cliche analogy of the you're on an airplane and the, um, uh, the mass, the yeah, mass the falls mass. like until you take personal responsibility, until you figure your own stuff out and get your own stuff figured out financially, spiritually, emotionally, every area then, and not until then can you look up and just take a deep breath and look to your left and right and see who else you can help. And obviously right. the first of your family. And then once you get, that taken care of. Then you can look up and who else can I take care of? Coworkers, other family members, church, community. And then literally it, there is no end after that, but it, it can't, none of that can even be discussed until you've taken responsibility for your own life. And man, it's so important. And the lack of it is just freaking rampant right now. I mean, I hear guys that'll talk about, they'll say things and maybe they don't say it or vocalize it, but they're definitely thinking it is like, why don't people take me seriously? And from my perspective, I look around and, and I don't see everybody's like this, but there is a large percentage of men and women on the planet who are asking themselves that question. And yet when you look at their life, they don't even take themselves seriously, right? So what's the, <laughs> what's the very first precedent that most people set in the morning? Well, the very first precedent is hit snooze on my alarm. Yep. That's the very first thing people do in the morning. And you're telling me that you want people to take you seriously, yet you can't get your butt out of bed when that little alarm goes off. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that you do in the morning. And, and then it just perpetuates throughout the entire day. And, and we're, we're shifting blame and we're shifting responsibility and we're, we're, we're making excuses and we're telling the, the reason we're not performing is it's other people's fault and it's the economy and it's my boss and it's my wife or it's my husband and then you have the audacity to ask yourself why people don't take you seriously or why you're not performing, why you aren't losing weight, why you aren't gaining strength, why your bank account isn't growing, why your debt's growing. It's, it's not really a surprise when you don't set the precedence of taking yourself seriously first, which is the point that you're making. Absolutely. Man, tell me, when was that moment, that moment where it clicked and you, and you said, God, this is what I was put on this earth to do? Like, I, from this point forward, my mission is order of man and all that you were doing around that. Like, what was that point? What was going on in that time? Yeah. So th about 10 years ago, and I won't get all, all the way into the depth and the backstory of this, but my wife went, went through a separation with me and it was a really dark time. Anybody who's been through a separation or a divorce knows exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, it's a dark time. It really is. And for a long time during that separation between her and I, I was blaming her. Like, how could she do this? Why wasn't she loyal? Didn't she appreciate what I was doing for the family? And, and it, it was all her fault. And I don't know why necessarily this shifted for me. Maybe it was just because it wasn't working. It wasn't producing the result, which is to win her back into my life. Yeah. So I started thinking a little bit differently and I started thinking about, you know, maybe, maybe I've got a small part to play in this, <laughs> you know, yep. like maybe there's some things that I dropped the ball on, or I was the one being disloyal and I wasn't doing the things that, that a good man does for for his, his wife and his yep. kids. And that was the moment that that clicked where I actually thought our marriage was over. And so I really stopped focusing on her actually, because I thought it was over. I'm like, well, I, you know, this is done. Yeah. And at that moment I started to work on myself. So I went, I started working out. I found some good guys who were succeeding in their businesses with their, their fitness goals, uh, their mentality, like everything was going good. I reached out to these guys I connected with these guys. And what was really fascinating is as I began to work on myself, she responded to that. <laughs> and long story short, we, we've been married for 15, 
excuse me, 14 years this year. We've, you, awesome. you mentioned earlier, we've got four kids. Yeah. So like things are good. They're not always great, but things are good. Uh, and then about four or five years ago, I started talking with guys about what I went through, like that, that separation and how it was. And everybody that I talked to was like, oh man, I've been there. Yeah. I went through a separation or I I've been through a divorce and it was, it, it just resonated. Yeah. And that's what really clicked with me is like, man, these guys are really experiencing this. So about three years ago, I was like, why don't I just start a podcast? Cause I had a financial planning podcast I was doing. I'm like, why don't I just shift gears from the financial planning podcast over to this and I'll have conversations with the best men on the planet that I can find. And we'll talk about some of the stuff that guys need to hear about. And, and it wasn't really a, a vision of like starting this business and this movement of millions of men. It wasn't any of that. It was just, hey, this would be kind of good for me and some guys I know. And from the minute I started, man, it just took off. It exploded, which was a testament to the fact that it's much needed in society. Absolutely. It, and I appreciate you sharing that story. And it's it's almost eerie, like your story and, and my story. I mean, I, I went through a similar situation and I had a, uh, my ex-wife, she had an affair and I went through a, a long period of depression and it was a long separation that finally culminated in a, in a divorce. And man, for the next two and a half years, you know what I did? I freaking played the victim. Mm -hmm. I played the victim for two and a half years years that I'll never be able to get back. And I was completely content with, oh, listen to what happened to me. I got terminated from this job and it was a crazy situation. Wife had an affair and, oh man, just feel sorry for me. And I'm just going to hang out and just use this as an excuse to be lazy for a little while. And just 100% was okay with that. And then finally, one day I just had this realization that, man, it's all my fault. And I talk about this concept of it being all your fault and taking ownership and a lot of times when I discuss it, especially with other men in regards to my past relationship, they get real like uncomfortable. They're like, oh, dude, no, no, that was not that was not your fault. And I'm like, yeah, it was. If I mm -hmm. had been the absolute best husband on the planet, if I had created the most incredible environment in our home, would the affair have still happen? Maybe, but probably not. And was I a terrible husband? No. But what I was, I, was that the best no. And so moving forward from that, I mean, I, I'm, I am now the husband that I am because I went through that. And these things that happen for you, not to you, it's one of my favorite lines. Like, I am so grateful for that divorce and that situation and how everything played out, even though it was an incredibly painful few years. But it made me the husband, the father, the man that I am today and really unlocked in my brain that concept of taking ownership for all the other crap that I was blaming on other people. And, and man, it's, it's, it's exactly what you said is so true, man. It's so important for people to be able to own it and just, and the, the encouragement of that is if, if it's your fault, then you can fix it. Right. <laughs> like you got, yeah, that's the thing people do. Out. That's so true. And that's what people do is they'll, so what they'll do is they'll blame their boss because the boss is playing politics or their wife or any, any excuse they can come up with. And they think that that's empowering because if it's somebody else's fault, then, you exactly. know, it can't be possibly on me, but it's actually dis, dis, I don't know if disempowering is a word, but it's, it's not empowering. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the opposite of empowering because what you are actually doing when, when I say, if you and I are business partners, for example, and the business collapses or whatever, and I say, it's all Tyler's fault. Tyler yeah. did this. He didn't do this, blah, 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 blah. What I'm doing is I'm taking all of the power that I possess as a human being mm -hmm. and I'm giving it, voluntarily giving it to you and saying, it's your fault, so you fix it, and I'll just sit here and wait for you to do something. Hopefully you will, but hope isn't really all that great of a strategy. <laughs> yeah. So I'd rather say, you know, yeah, maybe Tyler had a part to play in this, but ultimately there's only one person I can control, me. So why don't I just take responsibility for everything that I possibly can and give myself ultimate and absolute ownership to be able to move this forward? The problem with that is that people are intimidated and afraid of power. They truly are. They're afraid of even their own power because it means that they will need to exert themselves and they feel worried about their own inadequacies. I understand what it is, but I'd rather try and fail than sit back and be afraid to not try at all. Man, you're, you're exactly, you're exactly right. Um, and I never, it's interesting that you just said that the, the power of themselves. That's interesting. Um, Man, tell me, so on your podcast, I know you asked every guest for their definition of what a man is. I'd love to yeah. hear your definition, but here's here's kind of the 
the way I'd like to frame it. 156 episodes ago, what was your definition of a man then? And then now has that changed? It actually really hasn't changed all that much. I think I've done a better job articulating exactly what it is and narrowing it down. Um, because I think, I think if you were to ask any person out there what a man is, I think generally speaking, most people would have a pretty loose idea of what it is. And they would probably be able to tell you, oh, my dad was a man. Yep. Or my grandpa, yeah, he was a man. Or my platoon sergeant, yeah, that guy was a man. So they can point to who men are, yep. and yet they can't really define it. And that's kind of where I was. I was trying to figure this thing out, and I still am. I'm still on this journey myself. But when I look at what a man is, I look at, we talked about personal responsibility and accountability. That's first and foremost. If I look at my son, so I've got three boys and a little girl. If I look at my boys, they're boys. They're boys because they don't take accountability and responsibility for their actions. You know, they've got some chores around the house and my oldest has to work on his piano and do those type, you know, do the dishes, those ty yeah. types of things, right? But ultimately, the, the burden of responsibility falls upon my shoulders as the man of the house. So they're not expected to be boys. When a, when, when a male learns to take responsibility for himself and accountability over his own life, that's when he turns into a man. It's the reason why we have 30, 35, 40-year-old males living in their parents' basement that aren't acting like men. They're behaving like my 10-year-old son. Yep. So it's not a really an age thing. It's a maturity level. Now, outside of that, responsibility and accountability is – I believe there's three responsibilities primarily that all men need to adhere to and it's our, it's our job. It's our responsibility to do these things and those three things are protect, provide, and preside. So when you look at protection, it's about being equipped and able to protect yourself, defend yourself, defend your home, protect your family, protect those who cannot protect themselves. When you look at provide, yes, financial provision but also – mental, spiritual, emotional well-being for your family and those you care about and preside is synonymous with leadership. So it's to lead. Every man is a leader, whether he's leading himself solely or leading his family. Maybe there's a project to work or something in the community, but we are uniquely designed to step into those three roles. Now, some people will fight me and say, well, women can do that too. And they absolutely can. Yeah. I know plenty of women who can do all three, probably better than a lot of guys out there. But, but in all reality, the way that we are hardwired, the way we are, are biologically programmed to operate is to do those three things, is to step into those three callings. And any man who isn't doing those three things knows it for himself and feels less about himself because he's not doing what he knows he's born to do and what he's capable of doing. That's the reason we see so much depression in men because yep. they're not doing those three things. They're letting society do everything else. They're, they're, they're relying upon everybody and every, everything else to take care of their, again, rights and entitlements. And deep down in their soul, they know they're not doing the work of men. And so they're depressed and they're down. They're angry. They're bitter. They're resentful. If they just stepped into that calling, I believe that would alleviate a ton of the depression that we see in, in men today. And that, that inability to do so, it's like their ability, they're choosing not – to go all in. Yes. And so when you never, ever truly go all in, you can never be all off for better words. So we talk about this concept of being on and off, on and off, on and off, but it's really not off. Like you're on at work. You got to be on at home. Right. But there are times where you have to be able to turn it off. The reason why I believe most people just are stuck in the middle is because they don't get the first one right. They don't get the, like you talk about being able to provide. They don't, when you are, when your brain is focused on what you haven't done that week to provide, mm -hmm. how can you really be fully present at home that weekend with your wife and with your kids when you're worried about playing catch up next week because you slacked off last week? So it creates a scenario where can't be all on, cannot be <laughs> all off, and you're just, you just get stuck in the middle and that is the worst place to be. Well, I, I remember times in my life in the not too distant past where I was literally walking paces around in my backyard because I didn't know how I was going to make the mortgage payment. Mm. And, and I didn't know how I was going to make the mortgage payment because I wasn't doing the work at work in order to provide the type of income that I needed to support me and, and my family. Yeah. 
And anytime there's a disconnect between the way that we view ourselves. So if you have this vision of yourself, like I'm a man, I'm a provider. These are the things I believe a man does. I recognize this because I see, I've seen my dad do it or my grandfather or people in my life. So this is my vision. And on the other hand, you have where you are that represents this disconnect Mm -hmm. and the greater and wider that disconnect, the shittier you feel about yourself. Yeah. And the only way to bridge that gap between the vision you have for yourself and, and, and where you currently are is to put forth some effort in order to bridge the gap. Like nobody's ever da- – like have you ever met an individual who's down on himself while he's at the gym working out <laughs> or down on himself when he's like in, in the work and making calls and hustling and doing all the things? No. People are never depressed when they're doing meaningful work because what they're doing is they're bridging the gap between their future vision – and their current reality. That's the happiest place, most fulfilling place anybody can be. And it's difficult. Of like, course it like is. That, that, that's the thing. Like I'm thinking as, as this, I'm thinking of you walking around your, your backyard and how do, how do I pay my mortgage? It's way more difficult to have that internal conversation knowing you're trying your best versus the guy that's slacking off, not doing really anything. And he's like, oh, I can't figure out how to pay the mortgage this month. But you know, I, if oh, I try, it must be somebody else's fault. Yeah. Like if I tried, of course I could, you know, but like when you are trying and going all in and to still be chipping away and you haven't broken through that ceiling yet, that's it's, it's difficult, but <laughs> everything significant <laughs> is difficult. Like yeah. that's just well, the, on the other the side is like, just, just stop thinking about it so much. Yeah. You know, like I think, I think for example, walking around in the backyard pacing, thinking about how I'm going to pay the mortgage. Why didn't I at that time just pick up the phone and make 10 prospecting calls? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what if I just did that instead, you know, and picked up one sale, I would have made the mortgage and I'm like, good, done. Yeah. You know, but, but we sit and we dwell and we wallow in our own self pity about these things. And there's another thing too, man, you said there, you you talked about that vision that you have of who you should be or where you could be and then where you are. Mm -hmm. I find this happening so often with people and it happened in my own life. Sometimes it's milestone ages. Like when I turned 30, I I had just had this idea of where I would be financially and with relationships and and everything. And I wasn't, I wasn't near where where I thought I would be. And I've had conversations with those that have hit 50 and have hit 60 and and are going through that. And man, my biggest encouragement to them is not to rush, not to feel like they have to play catch up. Because what happens is when you feel like you're behind and you feel like you've got, you got to somehow make up for this lost time, you take on opportunities that you maybe shouldn't. You take mm-hmm. on if you take a little bit more risk than you probably should, and it never ends well. And it's this funny thing about patience. You know, they always talk about you know, if you pray for patience. God's going to give you the opportunity to be patient. He's not going to give you patience, right? Right. <laughs> the other, right. The other, you got to earn it, man. Yeah. But the other interesting thing about patience is I found that the people that are that are the most patient or the times where I have felt and been the most patient, things have happened the quickest. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like just the act of being in that centered place of like knowing that, Hey, I'm, I'm, this is a long-term game. There's plenty of time almost creates this. I think it's people can sense desperation. Yeah. Especially in sales. And that's what, that's what oh, a lot of we sure. talk about. Like people can sense when, when they know like your family's like, livelihood is based on them saying yes across the table from you. Like, but it affects so much more than that in ways that we don't realize. And it's, it's so critically important, man. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I mean, you're talking about faith, really. You know, a lot of people think faith is just a belief that it'll work. No, it's not. I mean, that's part of it. But the other part of it is you've got to work it. Like if you don't really believe that it'll work, then you won't work and nothing will work. So yeah, faith is not only a belief, but it's the action to support the belief. Otherwise, without both of those, nothing's ever going to happen. But it's really funny. I get I get questions from guys. The the question that I, I really just don't like from when I get from people is like, hey, I'm, I'm turning 30 years old. Like what's one thing I should know now that I'm 30 <laughs> and not in my 20s? I'm like, dude, there's no difference between 29 and 364 days yeah. and yeah, yeah, 30 yeah. years old. Yep. Like stop thinking that there's some like magical 
formula or some magical thing that you're supposed like at 31 you learn this lesson and at 32 then then you graduate to this lesson look you're out of grade school like there's no mm. there's no rule book that says only in your 30s can you learn this lesson and in your 20s this is what you do and in your 50s this is what you do make yeah. your life make it work for you and learn as much as you can as quickly as you can so you don't have to wait until you're 60 to figure this whole thing out absolutely i love how you mentioned faith and i love that saying um, that the opposite faith of faith isn't isn't belief it's sight like mm. the opposite of faith is sight and it's believing in a vision that you cannot see mm. and so it's having that vision like i'm i'm envisioning with with order of man like having this idea of what this could turn into and putting in the work as though it's already happened, even though you can't even see it. Like it's not tangible. It can't be seen, but your actions every day are proving <laughs> what is to come before yeah. you ever see it. Man, it's, it's such a huge, like you talked about hope not being a good strategy, but true faith, like true, true, true faith is so much of a deeper level of just, it's a, it's an, it's just like a, it's an understanding that when things mm -hmm. happen, like, of course, of course that happened. Right. And because, that sucks. And what are we going to do about it? Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> with the good things though, like when the good things happen, like, of course this connection was made and this deal was landed because the, F, the work has gone in. <laughs> right. Like, like there has been work that has gone in. Um, That's man, what you hear people talk about luck all the time, right? Oh, you're lucky. Oh, I can't believe you. Get, oh, you got that guy on your podcast or, yeah. oh, you, you got this, this whatever publicity it's like yeah but that wasn't luck i mean that was years and years and oh, years yeah. of effort and struggle and heartache and obstacles that you overcome and you grind through and those things start to present themselves and you put yourself in more of the opportunities to get more quote-unquote lucky absolutely hey yeah. tell me so of all the guests that you've had and <laughs> i'm not saying oh man i know where best, we're going <laughs> but not the best just just name <laughs> one though that made a significant impact one that like when you got out of that interview it changed maybe something the way you looked at things or changed how you reacted to certain situations. Yeah. Just one that had a big impact on you. Yeah. I mean, I've had, like you said, so many great guests. Um, Jocko Willink, obviously huge. I've talked with him a couple of times. I, I always walk away with a new perspective of like, quit you, BS uh, got, on yourself. Not on the mat with him yet? No, not yet. He, <laughs> he invited me to go do that. And so, and I reached out to him last week, so we'll, we'll see nice. when we can figure something out. But nice. I fully anticipate on getting my butt kicked, um, <laughs> which will probably be like the funnest, most painful experience yeah. that I've ever endured. Yeah. Uh, he was good. John Eldridge, he's a, he's the author of a book called Wild at Heart. Yeah. Uh, man, just so, that that's to me. He he really, I think he really kickstarted and 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 launched this whole movement to help men step more fully into what it means to be a man. And then I just had another podcast. Depending on when this conversation of ours goes live. Uh, with a Navy SEAL, he he's not only a Navy SEAL, but he's he's also Ranger qualified. He's a New York Times bestselling author. He's he's uh, starred in Active Valor, the movie Active Valor. Just an incredible, incredible guy. And that podcast should be coming out in two weeks. And okay. and I man, he's one of those guys when you talk with him, you just like instantaneously just connect, and there's something there. Yeah. And that conversation was so so powerful. Man, I've had a we've got a a guy kind of very similar background that's done some speaking and some coaching at events with our company, a uh, guy by the name of Tom Shea. Are you familiar with Tom? Oh Shea? yeah. I, I know of Tom, but I don't yeah. know him personally. It's you've, you've interviewed a lot of people with that type of high level, uh, military special ops background. Sure. Do you sure. find it? Or do you have a military background yourself? I thought you might. Yeah. Yeah. I spent uh, eight years in the national guard and I actually did an active duty, uh, combat tour in Iraq in 2005, 2006. Okay. Awesome, man. I, th I appreciate that too. Yeah, that's my, my, I have a long family, uh, history in military and that's such a huge, important thing with what we do within our, uh, business. But man, like when these people talk and they tell these stories, the average person, and I'll say me, I have a hard time just grasping the reality of the words that are coming out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. Like Tom's told these stories of, you know, getting blown eight feet across the room and laying on the floor and everything being in slow motion and having to tell himself like, get up, get up, hmm. get up. And how there was only one word. It was just the F word. He just kept yelling over and over and over. It's just the only word that could audibly come out of his mouth and then taking that first step and then climbing over bodies to find his people and like just the, the most 
insane, chaotic situations, it's it's like a movie, right? Like it's yeah. you can't yeah. even it's hard to really grasp the reality, but it's incredible those that when they have gotten out, like you just mentioned, that have gone on to careers and in, in coaching and self development, helping other people. Like it's the their ability to take the lessons learned there and apply them to the it's everyday amazing. life. Yeah. It just Tom spoke at one of our events, man, and he said he gave this unbelievable story of one of the issues that happened in in combat. And and then his very next question to us was like, so, hey, tell me about a time when you were really stressed. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, nothing's going to compare to that. Like, never. How about that? Like, (laughs) nah, not even close. Because I don't want to discount like what those guys experience. I certainly don't, and and I'm not really one to speak because I never had a a close call or an experience like that in my in my military service. Um, But I but I also think we have a tendency to discount uh, human resilience and resolve, And, and I think human beings in general are so much more capable than we give ourselves credit for. That's why we see these heroes and they are heroes. That's why we see them go into these situations and do some incredible, you know, I had a guy by the name of Dakota Meyer. He's a medal of honor recipient. Uh, he, he, he rescued dozens and dozens of people in, in a, in a situation that was horrific. Um, these, these are, these are like everyday average guys. Yeah. They've got some additional training and, and they are elite from that perspective. But when you talk to them, they're, they're down to earth. They're yeah. got, they put their pants on the same way we do. They hang out, they do the same things they make the same mistakes. And I think it's a testament to the fact that if we don't believe we can do stuff like that, it's because we haven't tested ourselves. Like yeah. we haven't put ourselves in enough difficult situations that we recognize, holy shit, I'm, I'm capable of more than I've ever given myself credit for. So again, it's not to discount what these guys do. It's heroic. It's brave. It's, it's, it's manly. It's virtuous. Mm. But I think we're like, a lot of us are capable of so much more than we give ourselves credit for. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. So tell me, with all that you're doing now and, and the lives that you're impacting, because I know it's so many, and I know you're probably receiving an incredible amount of emails and Facebook messages and DMs on Instagram, on people that were impacted from the content and the message that you're delivering. Yeah, one of the best things, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at Meltdown in the desert. It's gonna be awesome, man! You're coming to my hometown, my backyard. That's awesome. I can't wait. That event, uh, I was telling Colby, man, like I've never seen an event where when I ask somebody, "So how was it?" It's just this big smile pops up, and it's just like they get all like gushy, and I don't know. It's like they they like melt. Like Ever's a good good friend of mine, man. He he puts together some great events and does some good things. Yeah, so. In that, in the uh, recap video of the meltdown in the desert from last year, I loved that that clip that it was you on stage and you were talking about like the fact that people need to hear your story, like they're waiting for it, like there someone is waiting to hear the message that you have to give. Yeah, definitely. And I think for me, kind of stepping into this over the last year and putting myself out there and and having that realization. I want to empower other people and I know you want to empower other people to get beyond that. Who am I complex, right? Like, sure. Who sure. Am I, who am I to get on a podcast and have yeah. a conversation with someone like, who yeah, am I? Yeah, definitely. But that everybody's got stuff, things that they've been through, struggles, failures, successes that someone, like you said, is waiting to hear because it'll resonate with them coming from you that wouldn't from me that wouldn't from Tony Robbins that wouldn't from Gary Vaynerchuk that wouldn't from who know anyone it's from you in the context in your situation that it gave them the breakthrough and so talk about that a little bit and kind of like as you started putting yourself out there did you have that why or how how am I who am I to, to yeah to, sure to get out there and how did you overcome that yeah, I mean, you're you're right. I mean, just to go back with, and I want to reiterate with like Colby is like, I mean, he, he's done a good job. That's why that that's why people like that event so much. Yeah. I mean, it's is because he's led that event from that position of, mm-hmm. I'm just going to share my story, yep. right? And he's so good at that, at doing that. He's so good at recognizing who else is good at that. Yeah. And so I've I've never positioned myself as as an expert, mm-hmm. as a guru, 
You know, when I started Order of Man, it was never like, hey, I've got this all figured out. Follow me. I'll, I'll lead you to the promised land, right? <laughs> it was, hey, guys, I don't have all this figured out. I want to figure it out, and I so want to go on this it's, journey. It's called Let's the Order go together. of Man. I'm number one, and here's yeah, that's number right. two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> that's right. It, yeah, I didn't – but you look at it. I mean I didn't call it Order of Ryan, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's Order of Man. It's a society. It's a brotherhood. It's a fraternity of guys who are banding together. And so I never positioned myself – and that's the beauty of the the environment in which we live right now and the culture that we have is you don't need to be the guru in order for people to listen to you. Yep. You just need to be real. Yep. Because so many people are sick of hearing these these like regurgitated stories that the the gurus and the experts think they think people want to hear, yeah. and it just doesn't land. It doesn't resonate. But what resonates is, man, I've been through the shit storm, and I've I've managed to get myself out of it, and and at times I walk back into it. But here's what I do, and yeah. here's how I handle it. What do you do? I'd love to hear from. How do you do it? Yep. And so now we go into this thing collectively as opposed to I'm the leader, you follow me. No, let's go in shoulder to shoulder. We'll go together and people resonate with that. And then in addition to that, it takes the burden and the weight off of your shoulders of like, I have to have everything figured out. No, I don't. I just have to be real with people. Yep. Where am I succeeding? Where am I failing? Where am I struggling? And the more we share everything, not just the victories, uh, the, 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 the better off it's going to be. And that's, that's what meltdown's all about, man. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's about being real. It's about being genuine. It's about, uh, sharing the struggles and doing it together. And that's why I called this put together. Like I said, such a great event. I'm looking forward to going down there. Dude, you're exactly right about it's, it's being real. And you talked earlier in the podcast about for some people to be vulnerable for the sake of being vulnerable, because Lewis Howes told you to be vulnerable, but that's not you. That's not you. Like it's not going to come out. It's not going to come across right. Versus- vulnerability is not – same thing with strength. Vulnerability in and of itself is not a virtue. Neither is strength yep. because you can be strong and do nothing with it. So what good did it do? Nothing. Exactly. Yeah. And it's so, so funny. You've like, got to apply that. And it's so funny. I've had people there that have asked me the in their exact words, how can I be more authentic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's I'm something like, that can't holy, be gained, I'm like, man. holy yeah. cow. I don't know where to where Yeah, to, but where that, to the problem with that is that's that's the marketing, right? Yeah, I mean, there's is. so many people that have come out and say, you got to be authentic and you got to – it's like, you know – I don't I don't know how else to reframe that because you do want to tell people that that's probably the way you connect with people. But I, I, I try to avoid words like that because mm-hmm. they're they're marketized, right? They're weaponized. Like yep. be authentic. And here's the five step formula to be <laughs> authentic. And it's it's yeah, exactly you, right. you know what I'm saying. From. I think yeah, people yeah. know. I mean it's the whole it's it's the whole reason that I even put myself out here in the first place is because I knew that for the vast majority in our society, there's two people they can look for, for motivation and inspiration and just knowledge in general. There was the multi multimillionaire mm-hmm. that's not relatable, that lives a different yep. lifestyle, has a different infrastructure built to be able to do the things they're doing at that point. Mm-hmm. And then there's the person faking that they're that. Yeah. And there was <laughs> so far and few between like, so f- it was such a gap that I wanted to come on and say, look, here's where I am. I have done some things. I do have a platform to speak from, but as I level up, as I continue to level up, I want to take you with me, Mm -hmm. but at the very least, I want to still be relatable because you will have watched me get there. Yeah. Watch the whole process. And man, this week I was laying in bed. I did a three day uh, water fast this week. um, Oh yeah. Sunday night to to Wednesday night. And I was on the second night and I just couldn't sleep couldn't sleep and I had this incredible clarity. It was weird. It was like, I was very, um, I had all this energy. I could, it was just wired, but I started thinking about all these things and, and a lot of them focused around that idea of, okay, I'm now 14 months into putting myself out there and these podcasts and vlogs and people seeing me now in a different light. And it just really, really made me uncomfortable. And so that morning, I would like to say I woke up, but I didn't never went to, I never went to sleep. And so I just got up, I went and did an hour of cardio, came back into my hotel room and hit live on Facebook. And I had like a 35 minute conversation and I mean, I got emotional. I was just like, man, I am you. I'm just on the other side of the screen. 
<laughs> like that's all. Like, that's I have so struggles. True. I have failures, and I'm going to talk about those and continue to talk about those. But like, I just am so grateful for anyone that even click on this podcast to listen to it. Like it's, it's such a weird, weird thing to, to grasp. Like it that is someone, weird, that man. someone would search something, click on it and spend 30 minutes listening to it is incredibly humbling. Oh, it is. But it's, it's like that responsibility to make sure that that person knows that like, I'm no different than you. Like I, my best are your best. My worst are probably worse than your worst. Like it's like, we're just all real people. And like, it was just this feeling of just this weight. Um, so many things going on, like my full-time career and now the two podcasts, the vlog and speaking and all these different things and trying to keep all these things spinning. It was just like, I have a responsibility and I am not only willing to do it, but like I was born to be able to do that, but it's not because I'm special. <laughs> right. Right. It's not because there's anything that God gave me that he didn't give you, that he didn't give Joe blow. Like I'm just want to put it out there and, and show people as we progress and, and hopefully teach somebody along the way, but really just give somebody, I mean, if it's as simplistic as it's kind of like, it's so easy. A caveman could do it. Like if this guy, you know, <laughs> if this dude can get on there and, and talk and, and become successful and then God, I got a chance you know, at least. I know I had this guy reach out on Instagram the other day and he sent me a message. I can't remember the exact message. And I wrote him back and, and, and shared something with him. And he wrote me back after after that and he said whoa man like I never expected you to respond like a little bit of like excitement I woke up this morning and saw you responded and I was like blown away I'm like dude <laughs> like you, you don't have to be blown away by that like yeah. if only you knew for example right now I'm sitting in my basement downstairs in my guest bedroom which is where my office is yep. I'm on a like a $70 <laughs> mic I've got this little thing that's 15 bucks yeah. and I've got some free software on my computer. Yep. And outside of that, I've got my gun safe. I've got a spare bed right here. I've got some stuff and some books. <laughs> it's like, this isn't, this isn't some professional podcast studio that you need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on. And like the yep. barrier to entry is so low. And if only we could peel back the curtain, that's what I'm trying to do. And you too yeah. is, is just let people know, just do it. If you have, if you have an idea, a thought, a vision and whatever, the barrier to entry is so low, you build it up more than it is in your mind. Oh, 100%. And with the daily vlog, like it's gotten a little bit more produced, but of course. it's a 24 hour turnaround. So I mean, it's as produced as you can produce it in 24 hours, but it, it looks incredible and it's got, it's cinematic. And, but this one vlog we were doing, I was doing this recap at, at night and I'm in my hotel room because I'm always on the road. And, and finally I was just like, all right, guys here's the deal. I'm sitting on an air conditioner. I was like, I'm not wearing shoes. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, yep. these are my bare feet. I put these clothes on because I just got back from the gym and I figured like, maybe I shouldn't be in gym clothes, but I put this on, but I stink. And now these clothes stink and I'm kind of pissed about that. But like, <laughs> and I'm like, this, like, this is one take. There's no edit. Like we don't cut it. We don't say like, all right, let's try that five more times. Like take 12. Like it's just, just because it looks better. Like I want to make sure people realize like that the authenticity, like it's still like it's as raw as it ever been. It just looks a little better. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, well, it's and you do that. Regard. I mean, you, 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 and you should do that yeah. over time. It's your, your quality yeah. should get better. Yeah. You know, I, 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 with the podcast, for example, I started with another microphone. This is my third microphone. Yeah. And this is the best sounding microphone I've used. Why? Because I built up the, the business. I've, I've got the revenue to support making other purchases and we continue to improve ourselves. But it doesn't need to be perfect when you get started. It just needs to get started. Absolutely. Man, yeah. one, one question I always like to ask, who is one person that you would like to hear on the Breadwinner podcast? Who? That's a good, <laughs> that's a good question. Who would I, uh, all of them, I mean, na name it. All these guys, Jocko, yeah. Tim Kennedy. I mean, all all these guys are incredible guys. Elon, get Elon Musk. That's who I want to hear. I'm fascinated by that guy, Let's man. Let's make that happen. Then. Let's do you it. Just, you just put it out there. Me. You just made it happen. 
I think between me and you, we could we could probably pin right, him down. We'll do, we'll do, a, we'll do, uh, a, we'll do a breadwinner slash order of man Elon Musk interview. There you go. Yeah, make it happen. That guy's fascinating to me, man. He's he's he's. But you've had some great guests, like Andy Frisella. Sean's been on the show. Yeah. Colby, I think, has been on your show. Yep. Like you've had some incredible, incredible yeah, guests. Have, you know, this, all these circles, man, they get smaller and smaller. So they do. Far, yeah, like, I talk to they somebody do. and they know every like. And you probably know Dom Fassett and. Mm-hmm. Uh, a bunch of other people we've had on. It's awesome, man. Hey, yeah. one last uh, real question before we before we go. One day, years, 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 years down the road, um, someone's explaining to your great grandkids mm-hmm. who Ryan Mickler was. How would they describe you? How would you want them to describe you? I, my answer is pretty simplistic on this. Somebody's asked me that before. My answer is, is very simplistic. I just want me to be described as somebody who does exactly what they say they're going to do and what exactly what they've thought about doing. (laughs) So at the end of the day, it's a man of action. I mean, that's it. Very simply, like he had some beliefs, he had some thoughts, he had some ideas and every one of those things he acted upon the end. That's awesome. I can't think of any other way to to close out this uh, podcast, man. Hey, tell everybody where they can find you on social media, websites, things like that. Yeah, you bet. Order of Man is our headquarters. So orderman.com. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all at Order of Man. I actually on Instagram, I do a lot more on my personal account, which is okay. Ryan Mickler. My last name is spelled M-I-C-H-L-E-R. Uh, but between Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and the uh, and the website, orderofman.com, and, and the podcast. I mean, you're listening to a podcast right now, so we've yep. got a podcast as well. You'll be able to find us. Are we are we fully stocked right now in books? <laughs> Every time Don't I check ask, Amazon. Man. Don't ask. Dude, I'll, I'll send you. <laughs> That's a good problem. Know. It is a good problem. I'll, I'll send. We'll talk offline. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about for me. I'm just talking about for people to be able to go and find it. Yeah, no, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's there now. And got if it's it. not, I think I got a message that has said it'll be there on March 25th. Again, okay. I don't know when this is airing, but yeah. March 25th will be fully stocked. So. Okay. Awesome. That's been a nightmare, but we're we're working through it. Yeah. It's a good, like you said, good problem Gro- to have. Growing pains, right? That's right. That's, That's right. Awesome. Figuring all this stuff out, man. Well, man, I cannot thank you enough for your time here on the podcast today, and I look forward to connecting with you in person, man. I think we're going to be you're going to be at the Outlier. Uh, yeah, so we've got Meltdown Festival, down in meltdown. Uh, in Phoenix, and then we've got the Outlier. Uh, initially, that's what I thought you were talking about, but we've got yeah. the Meltdown, then we've got the the podcast festival. That's yeah. in my hometown. That's here in Southern Utah. Okay, got it. I'll be at both, man. Awesome, man. We'll look forward to seeing you there. And and guys, with that, this is the Breadwinner Podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris, and we will see you next time. Bread, bread, bread.